Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It's a wonderful day. Today's a new day in Christ Jesus. Yesterday had enough problems of its own. Tomorrow will too, but today is a new day. Amen. We get to worship God. We get to read his word and get wisdom and understanding. Amen. The Proverbs has a lot of wisdom, right? I I believe that the Spirit of God uh, had David write Proverbs for Solomon. Amen. And Solomon probably had a few of them himself. Good morning. It's so good to be here today uh, speaking the Word of God. I am privileged to come before you, the Lord has given me this uh, privilege to come and speak before you because he loves you. Amen. And if we come by the spirit, if we come with the spirit of love, that gives us power and a sound mind. Amen. That's what love does. I love the Lord because he loved me first and I had to let him love me. Amen. So we're in Proverbs. Proverbs today, man, my son, think about it in a righteous stance. Uh, uh, say to yourself that I have right standing with God, with the King of Kings. Even sometimes when you don't feel it, because you're not supposed to go off your senses, and that's what we're going to talk about today. There's two different types of wisdom. Amen. That wisdom is uh, from the Word of God. Or from our mind from the Word of God. So we must take it with walking in the Spirit. And how do you do that? By praying in the Spirit. By thinking of things in heaven, not on earth. Not going off of your five senses. When they start kicking in, then what you have to do is pray in the Spirit. And read some Proverbs. Amen. My son, forget not my law, but let thy heart keep my commandments. Amen. Wow. For the length of days and long life and peace shall they add to you. Wow. You want long life and peace? Listen to what Jesus said. Remember, David was under a different covenant than we were. He only had... Some sometimes the spirit would fall upon him, but now today we do greater things because we can be in ministry 30 years. Jesus was in ministry for three and a half years, right? So the length of your days are from the word of God. You must get understanding from the word of God. Your wisdom comes from heaven. Amen. That's where your wisdom comes from, your strength. So for your length of your days and long life and peace shall they add unto you. Amen. <clears throat> let not mercy, this is the word, let not mercy, Proverbs 3.3, 3, let not mercy and truth forsake you. Bind them around your neck. See, you have mercy and you have grace and mercy now because of what Jesus has accomplished. So you have a greater covenant now. So it, let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them around thy neck. Write them upon the tablets of your heart. The heart here is the mind. Some when, when, when the heart comes up in the Old Testament, most of the time is dealing with the soulish part of a person. But we have the Spirit of God living on the inside of us. We are perfect, one-third perfect inside of our spirit. And we know all things. We have the unction from the Holy Spirit, and we know all things. Well, how that? how is that possible? He gave us tools by praying in the Spirit. Oh, Barbara, great book, Barbara. Wonderful book. You, women, you got to pick up Barbara Saunders' book. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And uh, become friends with her. She's got wisdom. Remember, we think of things in heaven, not on earth. And when we when we input, man, I just got to say this uh, off the, off the chart a little bit. 
on, on Proverbs and wisdoms, different type of wisdoms. All heaven rejoices. The great cloud of mighty witnesses rejoices. You'll see that one day because you'll be part of them saying, yes, go talk to my son, Billy. <laughs> yes, it's happening because they can't speak to them anymore, nor can they witness about Christ anymore because they don't have the body, the earth suit to be able to do it. They're depending upon you. So your family is there spurring you on in heaven, whether you know it or not. One day we'll all be together, but today we're focusing on let not mercy and truth forsake thee, bind them about thy neck, write them upon the tablets of your heart. So shall you find favor. This is how you get the favor of God. You already have the favor of God, the favor of man, and a good understanding. But this is how you produce it, by knowing it. This is wisdom. So shall thy find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. That's when I say you have the favor of God. You have the favor of man and a good understanding because you are seeking grace and peace. Because it will be multiplied to you by acknowledging every good thing in you. By acknowledging everything that Christ has said for us to do. Amen. Amen. Many people desire favor, but they don't commit themselves to mercy and truth. Which Proverbs 3, three says... Uh, will produce. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee, the Bible says. Bind them around thy neck. Write them upon the tablet of thy heart. Stay with me. You need to renew your mind with the word of God. You need a kickstart. I'm going to kickstart you today. Amen. And, and bring you, the Holy Spirit will bring you back to the word of God. Bring you back. That's his job, is to tell you more about Jesus, to teach more about Jesus, to tell you about things and explain um, the parables to you. Amen. The so seed time harvest of Mark chapter four. So it says here, um, um, uh, so Proverbs 3, 3 will produce this type of favor. There are reasons why some people receive more favor than others. It's because they are merciful. Who wants more favor? Be merciful to the ones that are blinded. Amen. That's what our job is here for. Someone was merciful to me. I believe one of the first people that I know besides TV, I used to wake up as a little kid and watch Schuler on TV. I mean, he, he, had, he, he, he had something about Jesus there, didn't he? Brother Schuler <laughs> and others there. That's after watching Jack Elaine, after working out, right? But <clears throat> you see, Joey Montesano from Peatskill gave me the gospel one day. And my friends told me, hey, he's a Christian. Don't listen to that stuff. He's not a Catholic. <laughs> Stupid isms, isn't it? To have an ism might not be the most greatest way to live life because then... Then the wisdom, the wisdom of Christ, it, it, it's, it won't happen. This favor will not happen. Amen. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. This is what led me to the scripture today. And lean not onto your own understanding. This chapter, actually, this whole chapter has promoted the benefits of understanding. That's where we get understanding from is the word of God. And uh, this is certainly not contradicting what has already been said. Amen. This is speaking about our own understanding or just human understanding. The original sin of Adam and Eve eating their own, eating their own, reasoning above that which God has given them. They activated, they activated the five senses, the soulish part by eating of the tree of good and uh, good and uh, evil, a knowledge of good and evil. Amen. So, what we have now, Jesus took that back. We have the Spirit of God living on the inside of us. We get to pray in the Spirit. Max Licato says, man, I, I had to study about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You can see that on, on our website there on Facebook. And he was baptized 
in the Holy Spirit and speaking in tongues. He said it was the greatest experience and he, does, he doesn't, you know, uh, you can't live without the Spirit of God. Amen. You can live life and just barely live mentally and you will need a lot of prayer and a lot of different, and I'm not saying that we all don't need a lot of prayer and a lot of encouragement. Yes, we do. That's where the Word of God starts to kick in. Amen. There is a supernatural wisdom and understanding that comes from God. Let's go to, uh, I'm going to explain 2 Corinthians 2.14 as it's being put up. 1 Corinthians chapter uh, 2 verse 14. <clears throat> and we'll put that scripture up, but I'm going to explain it as the scripture comes up. Amen. There's a term, term natural man includes, but not limited to all people who are not born again. John, John, John 3, 3 says, well, let's go to, um, um, oops. Okay. Max Lucado. Did we get that scripture up yet? <laughs> I lost my spot. Okay. Here it says in Living Commentary, and this living commentary says here, if this sentence were to be, let's go to Proverbs 3, 3. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them around thy neck. Write them upon the tablet of your heart. If this sentence were to be diagrammed, you would be the understanding subject of the sentence. It's your responsibility to keep mercy and truth in your life. They won't forsake you unless you forsake them mercy and truth will purge your heart amen so you have to get that proverbs is a good place to start to get some truth and some understanding on the scripture proverbs 6 16 says by mercy and truth inequity is purged wow mercy and truth will pour i'm learning something here today Amen. It's, I'm, I'm not the expert. The Word of God is the expert. Amen. I get revelation in the Word just like you get revelation in the Word. Remember, your pastor is not a perfect person. You need to treat him as such as a, also as a servant of God and also as them loving you and directing you. And they're there to pray with you and to listen and to protect you from wrong things that are being said by mercy and truth inequity is purged and by the fear of the lord men depart from evil to get a good fear of the lord you know i put a post up about revelation if is there any book if if, if anything was disturbed in this book of prophecy that there they'll be taken out of the book of life Amen. Amen. So we have to be really careful. We have to fear only one thing is a good, healthy fear of the Lord. But he loves you. And he wants you to be uh, top of your class. Amen. And he wants you to prosper and be in good health, even as your soul prospers. So we have to prosper our soul every day. If this, it says, let not mercy and truth forsake thee, bind them about thy neck, write them down upon the tablets of the heart. It will purge inequity. Amen. So let's go to Genesis 19:16. Grace is receiving from the Lord what we don't deserve. Mercy not receiving from the Lord what we do deserve. If it was mercy that the Lord delivered Lot and his family from the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. Let see we have to have mercy. And we have to have grace upon people that are missing it. He did that with Lot and his family. And there's a lot of people in Sodom and Gomorrah right now. And you have to have mercy on them. Because they're being dragged away by their mind. By their understanding. And, you, and, they, and they are simple. So you need to instruct them how to... Read the Word of God and why. It's it's like an infant. You, it, it doesn't know how to drink its bottle yet. Wow. You have to get understanding, friends. You have to grab wisdom of God. 
Not wisdom of this earth. That's not going to... Wisdom of the earth is fine. It, 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 it'll help you. But to pray and to get the wisdom of God is where we need to be at today. So desire grace and mercy. And desire to give grace and mercy. That is what the gospel is about. Even, even, yeah. We deserved, we didn't deserve grace and mercy in the beginning before we got saved. God gave us grace and mercy so we could get saved. It says in Ephesians 2 8, by grace you have been saved through faith and not of yourselves. It was a gift of God, least no one should boast. Yes, it's true if you call on the name of the Lord with your heart, with all your heart. Amen. And, and if you, you will be saved. It's very simple to be saved. It's not hard. And then open up the Bible and make sure that you have good mentors around you. No, it's always good to have good team members around you. Hey, you're only as strong as your team. Amen. Your team members. No one should be out there going on this alone. They should be able to have places where you could talk to certain people and get uh, certain ideas strengthened. Amen. Or certain ideas you could put on the shelf because they're not ready. So grace is revealing from the Lord what we don't deserve. Mercy is not receiving from the Lord what we do deserve. It was mercy that the Lord delivered us out of Sodom and Gomorrah. The Lord delivered us out of Sodom and Gomorrah. Why? Because his kindness, his gentleness, his mercy towards us. While we were yet sinners before we were saved, Christ died for us. You're no longer, if you are saved, a sinner saved by grace. Amen. Jesus took care of that problem. Now we have to focus on the righteousness of God. You have righteous. It's like the queen. You, if you were next to the queen and the queen put her hand out, you have that favor of the queen. Amen. And same thing with the king. The king of kings, you have favor with the king of kings, the star breather, the one that made everything into existence, including you and I. Let's go a little bit further in Daniel 2.18. Um, uh, well, let's go further down here. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not unto your own understanding. We understand that. And it says here, in all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. Amen. So be wise and don't, don't be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. That's wisdom. That brings on wisdom. Um, I can't say that um, I'm wise in my own. I know that. But when I ask God for this wisdom, he gives it to me ample. It's ample. Yes. He gives it to me overflowing wisdom. Amen. And I need the wisdom of God every day. I'd rather go off the wisdom of God and then to go off of my own wisdom. Now, I will calculate everything when he says it to me. But then the final word, I listen to the final word of what the Holy Spirit is saying to me. Then I will do it. It might not seem correct. One time I sold everything I owned. Jesus told me, now don't do this unless you hear the Spirit of God. I sold everything I owned. My wife and I sold everything. And uh, we followed Jesus. And he brought us to Bible college. And he really lavished us. He opened up doors. This is encouraging. I mean, when, uh, we, man, it was just wonderful. Doors that we, we, he opened them up, but we had to walk through them. Amen. We had to constantly keep walking through them. And it was tough sometimes because our mind wanted to get in the way. It was like, it was mostly impossible. Everything that we were doing, we were walking in the spirit and we had to think about walking, walking in the spirit. And if we started walking in the flesh, we got in trouble. <laughs> because once you establish yourself walking in the spirit, you don't want to jump into the flesh and start making decisions. Sometimes you have to flesh things out. You have to sit down, do all your math, 
do all your studying and then inquire to the Lord and write your plans down and he will establish them. Amen. He says, delight yourself in the Lord and he shall give you the desires of your heart. Here we are, folks, walking in the spirit of God. Even your mistakes are made to prosper. They tried to put Joseph in jail and keep him there. But the wisdom of God brought Joseph from the pit to the palace. The same way with Daniel and the three smart Hebrew children. Amen. <laughs> Amen. They were, they, were, they, were, they were meant to die in the fiery furnace, but they became kings over provinces. And that's the ones that brought the tithes and offerings to Jesus. You think it was just one canister of myrrh? And frankincense, no. <laughs> it was quite a few gold. It was probably around $300 million <laughs> with the stuff. That's why Herod wanted it. <laughs> and they couldn't take it because it was over a thousand archers with the wise men. Why? If you're a king, what you bring and you were protecting your treasure, what you bring? How do you know that? Well, it's good to have billionaire friends. <laughs> well, maybe for a week. <laughs> I call it in. I call in what the Lord wants me to do for him. Amen. And to prosper and be in good health. Our bodies are strong. Our minds are, are, are perfect. Amen. And our bodies do not abate. Our eyes will not abate and our strength will not. We will not go weak. The Bible says that in these Proverbs. By putting these around your neck and studying. Amen. There's a race to run. Wow. And it's by the word of God. Some of you will live a long life. Others will diss what I'm saying. And I'm not going to diss what I'm saying. I'm going to be a good student of the word. The word is what leads me. Come on. The word is what brings me to the next phase of what Jesus wants. And plus, it's prosperity. It's health. Without health, you can have all the money in the world. It wouldn't matter. Amen. Amen. I know you got something out of this today. Because it's the Holy Spirit that loves you. Amen. I'd like to tell you what we're going to be doing. <clears throat> Amen. What we're going to be doing is we're going to Woodstock again. Yes. And we're setting in precedence of the scripture and the word of God. Amen. The word of God says to take the land. Amen. That I have given you. Amen. We'll be there on the 16th of October. Isn't that awesome? So you're invited up in Bethel, New York. Write it down. 16th of October. Amen. Amen. You can pick up your Holy Spirit Pit Benefits package book there. All kinds of books and t-shirts we'll have. Amen. You can pick that stuff up there. Uh, it's really good. It keeps you in the love of God. That book is one of, I would say, one of the most powerful books on earth. Amen. Why? Because it talks about the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Amen. And also, what we have next week, um, Tuesday night possibly, um, we're going to have Pastor Paul Kawanja from Africa. Amen. A, a known evangelist missionary in the bush. He has brought thousands and thousands of people to the Lord and also made them disciples, uh, helped them to, to, to be discipled and then set pastors in these villages. He's a no, no play man. Um, he'll be praying for us. He'll be on Zoom Tuesday night. Tuesday night, he'll be on the Zoom live, so make sure you ask us. Amen. Barbara, make sure that you text us. If you want to be on Tuesday night, Pastor Paul from Uganda is going to be coming in. They only have 72 churches over there with 2,000 people in that church. They need that book that you got. Amen. And then what you can do is become friends with Pastor Paul. And then there's there's a whole family I have over there. I got thousands of people that I love. I've been to the orphanages over there in Lake Victoria. I've seen signs, wonders, and miracles on a constant basis. I've seen a little girl come up out of her, 
out of the bed of sickness, couldn't move, speak, or talk, and never could because she was born that way. Uh, the pastor from the Karamojo tribe was baptized in the Holy Spirit. Now he's preaching the word of God to the Karamojo. I sat in Andrew Womack's seat, got up and spoke to 2,000 people, and it was phenomenal. Jesus showed up, but you know what? He was a little darker than me, and I didn't care about color at that point. All I wanted was Jesus. <laughs> Praying in the Spirit. Believing God. There was a couple people that seen him up in front triumphal entry. They were waving their hands. They, they had palm branches uh, on triumphal entry. That was the uh, a week before the resurrection. Sunday. Amen. <laughs> and it was. It was beautiful. It was a beautiful thing. And then our lovely sister that picks up babies off the street and brings them to this island. The Africans brought me in the boat, um, and they brought me to in Lake Victoria. I felt like Indiana Bones. <laughs> and the little children, we prophesied. They were in graph shacks. We prophesied brand new buildings and uniforms and material and, and teachers. And that's what they have two years later. Amen. She believes the word of God. That's Pastor Herbert's wife. So, man, they look a little like you too, Barbara. <laughs> maybe that's the place it's the jewel of africa so he'll be here and he'll also be doing wednesday morning teaching on facebook live make sure you put these down so again we will be in uh bethel new york at woodstock amen woodstock wow minister the last Last year, we ministered the Word of God. People got baptized in the Holy Spirit. Amen. And uh, the disciples came. All I had to do was call. Whatever Jesus told me to say, I said. And then he said, call the disciples in. I had a team with me. I called them down. When the people came forward, they'd lay hands on people. And they were well. Now, of course they were. Because the Lord called them forth and said he was going to remove everything they had that was not of him. Amen. And then deposit the Holy Spirit. It was powerful time. So if you're in the area, um, write it down. Well, we'll be live on that one too. That'll be October 16th. 12, 12 to 5. Four hours of bathing in Christ and fellowship. And different ministers are going to be there. Reverend Bill Benucci uh, and other ministers will be there. Uh, Williams Tribe from Florida. Amen. We got to meet them. And this band that came on, Fresh Fire. Amen. A young band that I met online. So I just sent them to the powers to be. And they said, yes, you can come and play. And they, man, it was awesome to hear this young band, Fresh Fire. Woo. That, and I got up right after that. I only needed 10 minutes slot. This time they gave me a half an hour. <laughs> Whatever it is, it doesn't matter. The Lord can move and work miracles in your life. And he, miracles are following those who believe. Thank you, Father, for uh, that we do not grow weary in well-doing. In due time, we shall reap the reward if we faint not. Barbara, in text, inbox me. I got a uh, publishing company that might want your, your book, and I'll give you his name. Amen. Amen. Woo! Praise the Lord. Just remind me. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we just thank you for the, for, the, for the body of Christ. We thank you for the new believers. We thank you for the believers that, that are, are acknowledging every good thing in them. We thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are doing works in our bodies and our minds right now. That you are setting this fire again, fanning the flame in the name of Jesus. Thank you. Bless you. All right. Amen.